everybody. This is Pastor Brady from the First Baptist Church of Gaston here for the 22nd episode of the Menorah Podcast. Today is Thursday, June the 27th. And Alan, if we sound a little tired on today's episode, I think we got a great excuse. Yep. We, We're uh, finishing up uh, VBS. Yep. So we wrapped up our vacation Bible school and God did some amazing, amazing things. And it was just such a wonderful time. And uh, we're tired, but we're still trying to provide you with the podcast content that your heart desires. Yep. So anyway. And for all of you guys out there that helped us in VBS, a big shout out. Yeah, thank you. It takes a lot of folks to, to pull this off every year. All hands on deck. So we are wrapping up, Alan, today, we are wrapping up our mini-series on uh, what we've been doing called Family Matters, and so this is based off the workshop that I did last month, back in May. Episodes 1, 2, and 3 have all gone over the curriculum that we have used in order to kind of get all this out there, and so this is the curriculum that I wrote that we're using. In the first episode, we kind of did an introduction about how we got here as far as how this all came came about and how this came as a need in our church. And then in the second episode, which was back in episode 20, we talked about what it means to personally love God. And so we did that. And all of these points come from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. That was point one was on verses 5 through 6. Then we broke that down. Uh, And then um, point number two came from verse seven. And so we talked about that last week. And so this week, we're going to talk about the third and the final and kind of wrap this up. So Alan, I wanted to ask you, well, before I ask you a question, I want to let our listeners know, if you're just now tuning into the Family Matters mini-series, uh, you're going to do yourself a big favor by going and listening to episode one, two, and three, and then coming back uh, to this one. So 19, 20, 21, and 22, if you're keeping up with it on YouTube as far as the playlist and all uh, the way that YouTube categorizes it. But Alan, uh, I know last week we talked a lot about purposefully teaching our children about God. Just any thoughts that you kind of want to put a bow on last week um not really i think that if you lead the lifestyle where you look for the lord's leadership in your life and you uh, show your family your children that you know even in the small things that you seek god's will and god's direction they'll know that that's somebody they can trust that's somebody that they can count on when times might be bad in their lives yep absolutely so let's uh let's wrap up the third and final one today uh so we're going to talk a little bit about promoting god's word so that's our third we talked uh, first and foremost about purposefully teaching your children that was last week we talked about in the very first episode we talked about personally loving god in your own life your own relationship And so today I want to talk about promoting God's Word, and we'll talk about several ways uh, that you can do that. Verses 8 through 9 in Deuteronomy 6, if you have a Bible near you, I encourage you to go ahead and grab that, uh, make that handy. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost doorpost of your house and on your gate. So when I say the phrase promoting God's Word, I mean that we lift God's word up in our homes in a way that our children are going to remember it forever and ever. I, you know, 25 years old, I can still remember situations and circumstances when my mom and my grandmother would share God's word with me in scripture that still sticks with me today. Psalms 119.11, I have stored up your word in my heart that I may, might not sin against you. And Alan, currently at the time we're recording this, there are 52 countries in the world that have outlawed the Bible, uh, where God's Word is not accessible. God's Word, you know, if you are caught with God's Word, you are arrested and and usually killed. And so we need to hide God's Word in our hearts. And as I told our in-person group for the Family Matters workshop, you know, we're getting to a day in America where at some point there's probably going to be some kind of regulation on churches, God's Word, the proclamation of the Word. There's going to be something that Satan's going to try to transpire and try to get together to divide God's people. So we need to make sure that we know God's Word. So, and you also need to remember, at the time that this scripture text was written, the time this command was given, there were very, very few written copies of the entire law. Uh So the people had the law read to them. 
So as they heard it, they had to memorize it. And here's the thing, Alan. We can remember phone numbers. We can remember something that some something that somebody posted from eight years ago. We, we remember all these things. If we can remember those things, we can remember God's word. We, as a people, are not as dedicated to memorizing it like we should be. And so I think that's important. So Moses makes it clear that we must promote Scripture and take it literally and do exactly what it says for us to do. I think that families in America have quit loving the Lord simply because we've stopped promoting Scripture and we've started promoting self. Uh -huh. Think families, and I, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about any individual family. I'm talking about families in general. We would rather promote ourselves, make sure our kids have a good ideology of us, a good thought process of us, than we would to make sure that they have the Scripture and that we're promoting the Scripture. So one thing that I think is important is that practice Scripture memorization with your kids at home. Practice memorizing God's Word. Uh, I think that's important. Let me give you two ways from verses 8 through 9, though that you can promote God's Word. And we touched on this in last week's episode, Alan. Make Scripture accessible. If you look there at verse 8, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. And so these people took this uh, very literally, and they had little containers that they would actually tie to their foreheads and their arms that had the Scripture on them. Uh -huh. Now, I'm not necessarily saying you need to do that, but you do need to see and, and copy in a way the devotion that they had to God's commands and the devotion that they had uh, to God's Word. I don't think we're as dedicated to do that like we should be. So I think that's really, really important that they were committed in that way. And we need to realize that, yes, you and I are not under the old covenant anymore. Through the blood of Jesus, we're now under the new covenant, but we should still be hiding God's Word in our hearts and seeking to obey Him. That should still be a part of it, not out of legalism, but out of love. Uh, somebody could make the argument that from Deuteronomy 6, 8 through 9, that somebody's promoting legalism as far as scripture memorization with little containers and stuff like that. Definitely don't think that at all. Don't buy that argument simply because uh, we are to hide God's word in our heart, not from a legalistic standpoint, but from love that we have from God. So don't listen to this podcast and go to Walmart and buy containers and strap them all over your body. Not asking you to do that. But a family that loves the Lord is going to make Scripture accessible. Let me give you several ways you can do that. The Bible app is regularly used on iPhones and iPads. That is a way you can do it. CDs and tapes and different podcasts are played in the car of Scripture and God-honoring programs. There are so many programs on podcasts that Lifeway produces and then other entities produce, Christian entities produce, uh, that can be found on different apps and podcasts that your children can listen to. The ability for your children to walk in a home and easily access a Bible uh, is really important. And then also that they see Scripture verses posted on the walls, that they see all kind of different things that promote God in the home, uh, in the decor, in the different things uh, that are mentioned there. Also, a designated area in the house for prayer, maybe a specific spot where your child knows if they've had a hard day, uh, instead of pitching a fit and taking that out in a different way, they can go to that designated area, maybe even before you get home and start praying and talking to the Lord. Access to the ways of God, the ways and wonders of God should mm -hmm. not be denied for our kids. Should be not something we deny them. Another way, buy clothes. I know that as a church, we, we try to produce regularly t-shirts uh, that promote God's word. You know, every t-shirt has a purpose. And so your kids are obviously going to know what our church logo is. They're going to see mom and dad are wearing that. Uh, and so that's important. So in today's world, with all the different things that we have, there really is no excuse for not making scripture accessible at home. Any thoughts on that, Alan? With today's media-rich environment, there is so much. And we've talked before about how easy it is for us to use media, use electronic media to for the good of the kingdom and for yeah. personal education and uh, such as that. Yep. We don't always have to take what they feed us. Exactly. You know, you can find... You can research and find a lot of information that is beneficial to not just you or your children, but your entire family. And it benefits your spiritual life as you fit into, yep. uh, you know, the bigger picture of uh, church congregation. Yep, absolutely. 
Uh, so we need to make uh, Scripture accessible, but also, I kind of already touched on this. I got ahead, believe it or not. Make Scripture visible. Look at verse 9 in Deuteronomy chapter 6. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. It was known in Jewish culture that they would attach these small containers uh, of Scripture, uh, and they were called a mazua. And this would be placed on the front door and then in every doorway in the house. And it was common that each person that lived in the house would touch the mazua in reverence every time they went through a door. And another scripture that supports that claim is Psalms 121 verse 8. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. So we are to make scripture visible to, visible to our children in our homes but also in the way that we live it out. How can we expect, I've said this time and time again through this podcast miniseries, how can we expect expect them, our children, how can you expect your kids to fall in love with the Jesus of the Bible if you are not showing them the Jesus of the Bible in your daily life? And so make him visible in decor, but also in family discipleship. There are many different decor items that you can go to at Hobby Lobby, Mardell's, online, right? There's all kinds of different things that you can purchase that you can uplift God's Word in your own home. I, I do believe that Scripture should be promoted more than skulls. War games or other evil, demonic, or demeaning symbols. If you're going to promote God's word, you don't need to have skulls and skeletons and and war games and things of that in your home. Uh, I I really think that creates a bad paradox for your kids. Uh And so as the parent, you take control of what your child reads. You take control of what your child watches, you take control of what your child sees, and you take control of what your child talks about, what you allow them to talk about. Because if you let the world raise your children, they sure are going to do it. Yes, they will. And the result will not be favorable for your child in the long run. And I want to remind our parents there are settings and protections on most electronic devices that will allow you as the parent to monitor what your children have access to. Take advantage of those. I encourage you to limit the amount of screen time that your children can have. You can um, set it up on an iPad, iPhone, TV, computer. There are settings that will limit that uh, so that those things don't become an addiction in your child's life. Yes, don't fall into the trap of letting some electronic device watch your child while you get stuff done exactly be careful i know we all have stuff that we absolutely need to do and for the majority of us we're pretty busy we have all sorts of things going on in our lives and we're shuffling and going from place to place to place particularly if you have multiple kids and and you have uh, kids in dance and kids in soccer and kids in baseball and yep. those seasons overlap and they overlap with church services and they overlap with other events that's happening, mm-hmm. um, parent teacher conferences and meet teachers and, and things such of that nature. And you have stuff that you need to do for each of those. Instead of giving your children your phone and letting them entertain themselves for an hour, involve them in the things that you need to do. Maybe you're prepping for uh it's your turn to buy snacks for the get snacks for the uh team that night yep you know involve them in helping you to get that stuff together and that's another way that you can be involved you you spend time with them absolutely i'm telling you now that time there's going to be very few kids that get to be um 80 and 90 year olds and they sit back and think man i cannot believe the amount of time my mom let me play on that iPad, that's just the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're going to remember the time you spend with them and not with them looking at all of your Facebook stuff either. Time that exactly. you actually spent with them. Correct. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and I believe that's important. And I believe as a society, we keep getting farther and farther away from that good 101. We used to call it TLC time. Tender loving care, whatever you want to call that, I, I well, think we've really gotten away from that. Well, the, the fine art of conversation is almost completely lost. Yep. Most people don't want to talk to people anymore. Correct. They would rather text. Yep. And they text because they don't immediately have to respond. Yep. You can wait as long as you need to. You might be waiting on another answer, and it's gotten so convenient. And we have our totally deconstructed our English language oh, for yeah. the sake of texting quickly. Oh, yeah. 
and I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing. Yeah. I'm just saying that you can take anything too far. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Everything in moderation. Uh, so the last thing, uh, we'll do a little few discussion questions here. Uh, in what ways are you currently making Scripture accessible to your child? Another question that you can ask yourself is how is Scripture accessible in your home? Is it visible in decor? Is it visible on the TV? And et cetera. And so discuss, the third discussion question is discuss ways that you can add more Christ-honoring decor. Maybe share different store recommendations with different people that might be listening. All of those different things. So we're going to wrap this up, Alan. It's been a great four weeks uh, recording this Family Matters mini-series. We'll be back next week, first week of July. I know that's July 4th, but uh, we'll we'll let you know whether or not we send an episode off that week. Might give you the week off. I don't know. We'll figure that out when we get there. But uh, I do want to let you know today that uh, I want to close our Family Matters mini-series with Joshua 24, verse 15. Uh, this is what Joshua was saying to the people of Israel. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so I want you to make that decision very, very soon. And uh, we're going to be providing this in person uh, sometime again in the fall. We'll also do a 2.0 again or for the first time. And uh, But we just wanted to give this uh, content to you available online so that those that, were, that missed the first one can kind of be prepared for the next one. All right. Any closing thoughts, Alan? Nope. I think we're good. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Be safe. Have a good July 4th, and we will see you next time on the Menorah Podcast that seeks to share the light, speak the light, and send the light of Jesus Christ all across podcast airways. Have a great Thursday. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.